Alright, so this title of this video is The Black Bruce Lee. Alright, so somebody sent me a positive message, and I've said in my other videos that I wanted to share that positivity with the people out there. And I'm going to read the message, um, and then I'm going to comment on the message. It says, uh, Good evening, Sifu Freddy Lee. I would like to thank you for representing the real Chinese martial arts in your own expression of Kung Fu that I highly admire and respect. As a young black man, American man who's educated, hardworking, clean, and athletic, you have helped me a lot with your videos on YouTube, staying true to who you are and always being real. At first, I was going into boxing for competitive reasons to get out of my poverty living. But when I subscribed to your channel, I learned that real martial arts isn't just about violence, but spirituality and mental, and also along with the physical. Also look up to what you do for representing your own expression of Chinese Kung Fu. You are the Bruce Lee of today because you're not afraid to be who you are and express what you represent. Staying true to yourself as well as the real Chinese martial arts, you're great at doing. I respect you and Bruce Lee and own some of Bruce Lee's books such as Da Ji Kune Do, Bruce Lee's Fighting Method, and his movies. I'm very interested in your Osho book as well. I love to read and would rather have a balance to be a real martial artist who's peaceful and have compassion for others than to be in combat sports and be a total evil violent machine. I'm even more dedicated to training in real martial arts and street tactical combat for self-defense thanks to you and Bruce Lee. Thank you for your time, Bruce. Have a safe weekend. God bless. So I want to share that positive energy as I stated before. I think there's just too much negative energy being, um, being passed around, you know. Um, we're, we're kind of drawn to negative energy and we, we kind of pass it on without realizing what we're doing. And uh, I wanted to make it a habit of responding back to people that send me positive messages. Because uh, it doesn't make sense for me to respond back to the negative people, but then I don't respond back to the positive people. And, and then all I do is just um, reply back with a thank you or I just don't reply back at all. It's not fair. You know, the people that send me the positive messages, you know, messages such as this one, um, is very important, you know, um, for what I do. You know, I, I feed off of people's energy and I'm, a, I'm beginning, beginning to be very much of an energy person. So it's very important who I surround myself with. You know, you know, it's very important that that I surround myself with positive energy, you know, from the people that I hang out with a day to, on a day-to-day -day basis, from the students that I teach, from the person that I'm with, from my children, um, from the people that I can communicate with in the internet. Um, the more positive energy that I get, the more that I can share that energy with the people out there. And, you know, title of this video, The Black Bruce Lee, um, you know, because it makes me thinking about that, you know, because this person that wrote the message is African American, he's black, and he's highly inspired by Bruce Lee, and that, and, and he, he has a deep appreciation for the Chinese culture, and he sees that I am doing my best to represent the positive in the martial arts and in the Chinese culture, and that I'm heavily influenced by Bruce Lee as well. Um, when I encounter individuals out there that are very much highly respectful of Bruce Lee and the Chinese culture, I automatically pretty much have a, a deep connection with them, you know, and, you know, it, it means a lot to me, you know, for this person to, to share that I was able to have a positive influence within his life, you know, and that, that it shows to me and to others out there that that we can make a difference in the things that we choose to do, you know, and um, you know it's it's popular. You know, combat sport is very popular. Football is very popular, and it's easy to get to kind of get sucked into that. But the problem is, a majority of the people out there, a vast majority of the people out there, are not going to make it to the pro level, to the professional level. You know, there's going to be a lot of boxers out there that will never make any money from boxing, but yet they will be sustaining 
a lot of the injuries involved and the head trauma and the CTE and the concussions and years will be shaved off, shaved off of their lives and and they're gonna go through some some pain and suffering you know and that's not what martial arts is about you know martial arts is about health and longevity you know and if a person can be inspired by me or Bruce Lee or somebody who's representing the positive aspects of the martial arts to get away from the violent aspect of combat sports and to head into the artistic creative aspects then essentially we're almost in a way saving lives you know we're we're we're, we're preventing violence um, and we're preventing people from early death we're preventing people from you know dementia you know concussions um, and pain and suffering you know you got to realize you know you think about it you know what are your chances you know if you're if you're doing this combat sport what are your chances of really making a, a huge profit from it and even if you do make a huge profit is it worth to sacrifice your health for it um, what's the what's the point of having a hundred million dollars or or ten million dollars and one million dollars if if you end up dying the very next day you know um it's just that when we're watching these these people competing you know in these boxing rings or whatever um, we gotta re always remember they're getting paid a lot of money to suffer those injuries and those and and pretty much damage their health and well-being and as you're training in what you do are you making even close to what they're making as far as money's concerned you know um, I think that it's it's it, it makes sense for some people to sacrifice their health and well-being for money you know um, but you have to make that decision for yourself if it's worth it and then also um, take a bet you know take a step back and really look at the situation and to see if you are even making any money at all if you're not then it just makes more sense to um, get involved in something healthier for you and not just healthier but more effective you know more um, scientific more creative you know where you're not limited you know where you know you're not limited because you got these big gloves on and then you can't do it a lot of techniques because you got these huge gloves on you can't even grab a gun you can't even grab a knife you you know you can't you can't throw the person you can't grab the person and then you're in that ring and then you're not allowed to kick or you're not allowed to knee or there's so many limitations there's no room for for creativity and artistic expression you know and it's 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 stepping further and further away from realistic combat you know and um, and you know the way I see it you know Bruce Lee He's one of the, the few uh, Chinese American influences out there. We have a lot of African American influences out there in uh, a lot of different areas of entertainment and athletics. You know, and in a way, the way that I see this almost is like, in America at least, it's like a black and a white world. You know, it's a black world, white world. And all the other minorities, you know, the Chinese, the Vietnamese, the Thai, the Koreans, the Japanese, um, or, you know, just every single other race, the Mexicans, you know, the Puerto Ricans. I mean, every single other minority is pretty much being represented by the African Americans and their struggle. So, in a way, to me, Bruce Lee, he is like an African American. He's representing the minority struggle. Just like it's, it's like it's like a Martin Luther King Jr. I look up to him, I look up to Malcolm X, I look up, up to Tupac, I look up to Muhammad Ali. You know, being a Chinese American here in America, um, I'm very much heavily influenced by black culture and African Americans and I look up to a lot of them and I respect a lot of them. 
and it's great to see African Americans giving that same respect back to some of the Chinese, you know. And to me, it's all minorities are pretty much representing the same. They're, they're representing the people that have been oppressed. And then you got you got the minorities, and then you got the you know the majority, you know Caucasians. And it's not that like one is better than the other, but it's it, they are representing the balance, you know, the black and the white, you know, and there's a lot of people that I've encountered in my life that are blacks, that are black, that, are, that have been influenced by Bruce Lee, you know, and they, they love Bruce Lee, you know, and there's just so much that I feel that can be learned from that Chinese culture that would benefit the African Americans and to help with their struggles, you know, um, of oppression. You know, because in the Chinese culture, um, it's almost, you know, the way that they deal with conflict, it, it, it's almost opposite of what the, the black culture is taught. You know, the black culture is taught to fight back. You know, if you look at the early times of like Malcolm X, there's a lot of fighting, you know, and it, and it can get violent. And the same thing with um, even Muhammad Ali, fighting back. I mean, he's a, a big black man fighting, you know, fighting, you know, for respect. You know, there's a lot of fighting, even with Tupac, a lot of fighting. And then it gets, it could get violent with gunshots and dead bodies. And you see all this, all this police brutality on the blacks because there's a lot of fighting. Blacks are taught to fight. And you look at the blacks... You know, they're all over the football, you know, they dominate a lot of the football, they dominate a lot of the basketball. A lot of it is just very active fighting. But the Chinese, what they could teach the blacks are to learn to fight, but in a different way, you know, with more of a peaceful fighting. You know, and that's what, you know, Martin Luther King Jr. learned from Gandhi. And that's what he implemented within his teachings, you know, basically fighting peacefully through pro protest. And even right now with, with the people going on, the, on the, their knee during the national anthem, that's kind of a way of peacefully fighting back, you know, rather than violently fighting back. And that's kind of like some of the ways of the, of the Eastern ways, of the Chinese ways, is like, knowing when to fight and when not to fight and to also know when to be silent and when to speak up. You know, like there are these, this interplay of these teachings within Bruce's teachings and then they talk about the art of war aloud, Sun Tzu, his teachings the Tao Te Ching with Lao Tzu. Like if you go deep into the Chinese culture and their philosophies and their way of life, there's a huge benefit of what the blacks can learn from that. And, and, and to go further beyond the Chinese culture, you could find it, of course, in the Indian culture, you know, um, and that's what Martin Luther King Jr. got from Gandhi, you know, and Osho, which is, you know, my, my favorite sage of them all, he is from India as well. And a lot of these teachings are also found within the Japanese teachings in their culture as well. So I think, you know, a lot of blacks should open their eyes and see that Bruce Lee and just Chinese in general are one of their own, you know, um, and I see the blacks as one of my own, you know, when I see, you know, a Tupac, when I see a Malcolm X, when I see a Martin Luther King Jr., when I see a Floyd Mayweather, when I see a Muhammad Ali, I see one of my own.
you know, to me, the difference between Chinese and black, there's no difference. We are in the same, we're representing the same aspect within the yin yang. You know, it's not necessarily us against them where it's like blacks against white, but it's just we are within the group that is representing the black, and then the Caucasians are within the group that's representing the white. You know, and in order to to become the best that we can be, um, there is so much to be learned from the Eastern culture, the Chinese culture. And it's a shame that Bruce Lee um, passed away so early in which it didn't completely influence the Western society the way that it could have during his time. It stopped short. So he was building respect for the Chinese culture and he gained a lot of respect for himself, but that's only the respect only came after his death. He never received the respect in America while he was living. Enter the Dragon only was released after his death. Then he received the respect in Hollywood and within the American audience, but he was dead already. By that time, they started to have all these fake Bruce Lee people come up with these random movies that didn't even come close to what Bruce was representing. And then they pretty much replaced Bruce Lee with Jackie Chan. And then it went backwards. All the hard work that Bruce did to build up the Chinese culture and their respect came tumbling down as soon as Jackie Chan started rising to fame. Because Bruce Lee was saying, hey, you know, don't laugh at us, respect us, learn from us. And then here comes along Jackie Chan saying, go ahead and laugh at us, disrespect us and treat us as we're subservient to you. And from that time on, we have not really truly fully recovered, you know, because they start pumping out movies, Rush Hour 1, 2, and 3, and all these other kung fu movies, pretty much led by Jackie Chan, that's designed to laugh at the Chinese people, you know, and and then they come up with the whole Kung Fu Panda series, which is worldwide famous, and then who does it star? A comedian, Jack Black, a white person who's trying to make fun of the Chinese culture and its people, and then Jackie Chan goes ahead and takes part within that whole shenanigan. So, basically, the, the Hollywood does a really good job of suppressing the Chinese people and their culture, disrespecting them, laughing at them, you know? Because what happens is, you know, there's the whites, the Caucasians that have a lot of, res you know, they're all over Hollywood with high respect. The Brad Pitts, the Matt Damons, the George Clooney's, and all these Caucasian actors that have high respect. And then the blacks have built themselves up to gain a lot of respect. You know, with Denzel Washington and Will Smith and all these great black act actors and actresses. So then now it's the Chinese that are taking a lot of the disrespect in Hollywood. And Bruce Lee was trying to fight against that and, and try to say, hey, you know, we deserve respect as, as well. And what I'm basically saying is that no matter if you're black or white, if you learn from the Chinese people and you can learn to respect them, not laugh at them, but respect them, learn from them, then it will enhance your life in so many ways that you will not be able to conceive. 
Now, if you look into your apps right now and the stories and the Flipboard and all these articles, they're starting to talk a lot about meditation. Talking about meditation apps and how everybody needs meditation in their life. Well, those teachings come from the East. They come from the Chinese culture. They come from the Japanese culture. They come from the Indian culture. You know, science is starting to see how important meditation is within your life. So, people, whether or not they realize it or not, they are learning from the East, but they're not necessarily giving credit to them. You know, they think that, oh, you know, this is an American who's teaching me this. No, the Americans are learning from the East and they're bringing it back over here. You know, so whatever you're using right now, you're using a Samsung or an iPhone, chances are it's probably made in China. And you're, you're, you love using your technology, chances are it's made in China or in the East. And not only are they really great at coming together and making us enjoy our luxuries in life, but there is a lot of wisdom in the East. A lot of things that they have to teach that will enhance our lives. You know, we live in a very material world, we live in a very competitive world, and we live in a very violent country. And in the East, they're teaching you to not be violent. They're teaching you to not be competitive. They're teaching you to drop the mind. They're teaching you to not be jealous, to not be angry. They're teaching you to be at peace. You know, and it's sad that Bruce Lee was the, pretty much the only person that broke into Hollywood to even have a voice. And then they had to start producing books for people to learn from. But a lot of people don't make the time to read. So if they don't read Bruce's books, what else could they learn from Bruce other than the generic aspects of his expression, which is, oh, you know, he could fight, he was fast. The true benefit of Bruce's teachings is his wisdom. And it is unfortunate that he passed away. And it is unfortunate that there's no true replacement to even come close to expressing what he expressed within the Hollywood industry. So we're left with YouTube. And that's part of my purpose of being here, is to be a living person here, a Chinese, a real Chinese American, trying to share about the Chinese culture. And not just the Chinese culture, but just the Eastern cultures in general. A lot of the teachings that I, that I share are not just from Bruce Lee, but they're from sages like Osho and J. Krishnamurti, Lao Tzu, Buddha. So they're coming from countries, other countries as well. Not just China, but India as well. So there's a lot to be learned from the East. And, you know, that's, that's why we're here. That's why I'm here. You know, and is to pretty much contribute towards the hard work that Bruce put in. He put in a lot of hard work to try to gain respect for the Chinese people and to try to share the Chinese culture. And I want to put my effort to continue on with that work, not to go against it like what I feel Jackie Chan did. First off, Jackie Chan is not a Chinese American. He is just straight Chinese. And He's not doing the work that Bruce Lee was doing, not even close. But 
I'm doing that work. I wish to fight for that respect. Because we live in a world where we don't fight for it, we're not going to get it. Muhammad Ali had to fight for it. Martin Luther King Jr. had to fight for it. Malcolm X had to fight for it. Tupac had to fight for it. Bruce Lee had to fight for it. We live in an American culture that demands for you to fight for your respect. And I'm here to fight for it. And I'm very thankful that I gained the respect of this person that wrote this message. Because in order to truly learn from a teacher, you need to respect the teacher. If you don't respect your teacher, there's no way you're going to learn anything from the teacher. No matter how great he is and what he does and what he knows, you're not going to learn anything because you don't respect the teacher. So, you know, I challenge the people out there, white or black, or any race for that matter, is to, is to try to learn to respect some of these Chinese people that have some beautiful things to teach, some beautiful things to share. You know, to not laugh at them, poke fun at them, but to look at what the African Americans have gone through, through all these years, through slavery, and racism, and how they were mistreated back then, and not just back then, but even now. You know, imagine all these blacks out there getting brutally beaten by the police, and then imagine people of another race, Chinese or whatever, or Asian or whatever, laughing at them because they're getting beaten. That's not something to laugh about, you know, because Every single minority is being represented by the African Americans at this moment. You know, we are representing the same group. We are the group of the oppressed. And we need to see each other as... We need to see the similarities within each other and not separate each other but see that we are one. You know, where blacks and all other minorities can see the similarities within themselves, come together and support one another. And through that strength of support, then we can work towards gaining equality with the other half, which is the Caucasian half, the white half. You know, but if all the minorities are disrespecting each other and non-supportive of one another, violent towards one another, no matter if it's black on black crime or black on Chinese crime or Chinese on black crime or Mexican on Chinese crime, it's, we're fighting and we're eliminating each other while the, the oppressors are continually working towards eliminating us as a whole. We need to come together, support one another, become strong, so that we can balance out the energies between the black and the white. But if the black starts diminishing because we're killing each other off, all the minorities are killing each other off, then the white energy will overtake the black until it's non-existent. So the black energy, that yin energy, is the real martial arts. Combat sport is that white energy. That yang energy is just everywhere. The MMA, the boxing, the football is just everywhere. To the point where it's so much 
a part of the culture that it can overtake all the real martial arts and just eliminate it all. No more Jeet Kune Do, no more Kung Fu, no more Freddy's Modern Kung Fu, no more, you know, um, Taekwondo, no more Aikido, no more, you know, Judo, no more like anything other than combat sport. You know, and the people that are representing the real martial arts, which is a part of the yin group, the black group, they need to come together, support one another, to create that balance. You know, there might be a lot of fighters out there, an immense amount of fighters, but if you decide to not become a fighter, but to become a real martial artist, to practice the same thing that Bruce Lee would practice, real combat, representing health, positivity, longevity, respect, honor, integrity, you know, representing true health, then you're gonna help build up that yin energy in order to balance out the energies between black and white. So it's not necessarily that the yang or the white energy is a, is a horrible thing. It's just that it's just too imbalanced now. There's too much combat sport out there. There needs to be more martial arts, real martial arts out there to counterbalance all the combat sport. There needs to be more Bruce Lee's out there. Not just the Bruce Lee that passed away, but the Bruce Lee within us, within me, within the blacks, within the whites, within all people of all races that have that Bruce Lee energy within them. You know, and and then represent that. And then come together with others who appreciate that. Come together with those people and support one another so that we do not become extinct like some of these wild animals that are beautiful animals but the humans are just taking over all the land and they're going extinct they need to come together to support one another in order to not be extinct and that's what martial artists have to do they need to come together and support one another and this person right here is sending me the message. He's supporting me, and I, I very much am thankful for that. You know, and to all my other supporters out there, I'm thankful for that. You know, we need to support one another. You know, just it's simply just to balance out the energies. You know, combat sport is not for everybody. It's for some people, that's some people's path, but it's not everybody's path. And we need to be the individuals out there to represent the other way. The true way. You know, but um, thank you once again for that message. And, you know, I hope to continue to share positive energy out there to the people.